the roads were winding, my friends. And all the roads we have to walk are winding. All right, going back to Jeffrey Steinberg of LaRouchePack.com, our site's InfoWars.com, and PrisonPlanet.tv. We're streaming the radio show live right now in multicam, full-color shoot. For PrisonPlanet.tv members, I want to thank the members out there. Uh, going back to Jeff Steinberg, you know, I want to shift gears now out of what's happening economically after we cover one more quadrant, because I got you know I want to pick your brain on so much more dealing with their agenda. I remember 15, 16 years ago when I was already on air, folks mailing me executive intelligence review, and uh, I'd already done a lot of research. And, it, and, and, and found your analysis to be accurate, but, but, but even going deeper. And now, 16 years later, I know that it's even worse than you guys even report. This is so off the chart, where they admit in published books and documents that the health care is to deny you care and train you and kill you. And, oh, you don't need glasses or eye surgery. How about a cane? Or we're not going to treat that brain tumor. We're not going to, I mean, this is, and then they, they, they cloak it and call it liberal. Then they have fake Republicans like Mitt Romney endorsing carbon taxes and global warming and who wrote the health care bill in Massachusetts as the model. And it shows how they control both parties. It, what is their global goal if they're not stopped? What will they do? What is their exit strategy from command destruction, from a post-industrial world as Maurice Strong and the head of NASA Space Center, uh, Goddard Center says, uh, Al Gore, Ted Turner, uh, just a few months ago in, in, in Cancun, Mexico, saying one-child policy, global tyranny, endorsing infanticide. I mean, people expect Hitler with a mustache on. That's th That was in the 30s and 40s, folks. It's shown up different this time, and because it masquerades with a lisping NPR affectation, people go, well, you're whispering at me. I'm just going to lay it, lay down, and you can run over me. Who are these people? What is their endgame? What's going to happen in Europe now? They're, they're gearing up for, obviously, a giant new war as a smokescreen. This is insanity. Well, look, the... Take it from the top. Uh, just take a look at the British Royal Concert. Prince Philip, who's one of the founders of the World Wildlife Fund back in 1960-61, uh, he just says it outright. Reduce world's population by 80%. Uh, there's a top economic advisor to uh, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, named Schellenhuber, who basically... Uh, spreads the whole global warming lie and says that the world population, the carrying capacity, is actually uh, reaching the point where it's under one billion people. These people reject the most fundamental thing about what it means to be a human being, which is creativity, the ability for scientific discovery to improve the universe. And so for them, they have a utopian fantasy that they can go back to some kind of postmodernist form of feudalism where somehow or other the world population is reduced by 80 percent by wars, disease and famine. And somehow or other, they will remain unaffected. Bertrand Russell uh, wrote in 1953 that uh, if we could perfect the method for having a black death once every generation uh, and we could determine who lives and who dies in that process, then we would have the kind of world that would be safe and happy place for oligarchs like him. Um, these people ought to go back and read Boccaccio, the Decameron, which was Boccaccio's account of the delusions of the oligarchy in Europe at the time of the 14th century Black Plague, where they also thought that somehow, by bloodline, they were immune to what was going on all around them. And they're not. So there's no question that they are doomed. The question is whether or not the rest of mankind is going to go down with them. That's right. Or whether we're going to put together an alternative policy. That's right. The social engineers, the Anglo-American eugenics proto-Nazis, I wouldn't call them neo because they, Hitler, of course, was a extension of that openly funded so by projects. the, absolutely, openly funded by the Rockefellers who fund uh, Bono now and, of course, Bill Gates. Uh, I mean, he's an open subsidiary of the Gates Foundation. He doesn't pay taxes, but goes around telling you that middle class and 
have its taxes raised. I mean, these people are nightmares of evil, and I'm glad folks are rioting in Europe whenever uh, uh, Mono, excuse me, Bono, shows up. But there's something on top of this, Jeff. This, this, this uh, transhumanism, and I don't mean all the flavors of it, but the dominant one, coined by Aldous Huxley's brother Julian Huxley when he wrote in 1951. Hitler has dis and you can pull this up, folks. Hitler's discredited eugenics because he went too far too fast. We're going to rename it transhumanism and promise that all of this tyranny and genetic engineering and the rest of it will extend life and, ma and make us transform. So they sell their takeover, uh, and they sell, and, and the elite sell the public going back to nature. But really, they're delusional, uh, as you know. It's being pushed everywhere now. Uh, in the transcendent man and the rest of it, that, that they're going to live forever. Here's the Daily Mail today. Dawn of a new age. The first person to reach 150 is already alive and soon will live to be a thousand claims scientist. Dr. Aubrey de Grey. And then you've got uh, you know, all the rest of these people pushing this. So at the highest level councils of the globalist system, this is what they're obsessed with. Whether it's real or not, they think, like some Ian Fleming book, Moonraker, they're going to kill all of us and then, and then inherit the earth and go up on some Mount Olympus and live forever like Zardoz. I mean, these people are nuts. Uh, please talk about it. That, that's exactly right. Uh, they are nuts. They have delusions, but I think it's more important to realize that basically uh, this is the essence of the oligarchical system. It's the essence of the system of money power based empire. You could trace it back uh, to Rome and even to earlier antecedents. Uh, you had a phase in which Rome morphed into the Byzantine Empire and then into Venice and Venice relocated to the Netherlands and to England. Uh, what you have is a system that says that there's an oligarchy at the top uh, that rules through the power of money and that uh, the rest of humanity uh, is basically to live in some kind of form of animal or slave existence. So it's that system that has now reached another one of those breakpoints where the Ponzi scheme has burst and where they are desperately scrambling for a way out of it. You said a few moments ago that, uh, that under these kinds of circumstances, they go for war and they go for dictatorship. That's exactly right. We've entered into a new fiscal year as of just a few days ago on July 1st in 47 out of 50 states. Uh, all of the states collectively are bankrupt to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. And in order to basically conform to the Constitution and basically uh, solve that indebtedness for the start of the new fiscal year, they've implemented levels of genocidal austerity. And now on top of that, you've got this whole silly debate over the debt ceiling uh, in which they're using it as an excuse for further slashing medical care, all kinds of things. The American people are looking for an alternative. And we have the alternative clearly in hand. It's before the House. Uh, we also know that to achieve the change in policy that's urgently needed at this time, President Obama needs to be removed from office through perfectly legal constitutional means. It's a scandal in my mind that the House of Representatives has not already convened the equivalent of a grand jury into the president's failure to meet the requirements of Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution in this ongoing Libya operation. Uh, it's a clear violation, not just of the War Powers Act, but of the most fundamental issue within the Constitution, namely the fact that we were not to be a monarchy. Kings were not to have the authority to frivolously go to war. It was given to the Congress precisely because we wanted to make it as difficult as possible to get involved in wars. President Obama believes that under the doctrine of humanitarian intervention, which in UN lingo is now called R2P, responsibility to protect, that he can bypass and rip up the Constitution. 
That is intolerable. Well, Jeff, and we can so see the new model of, of 1984 tyranny where they call war peace and, and go around slaughtering everybody. And that's the reason they gave him the peace prize, knowing that this was the strategic uh, blueprint. It, it's all part of the sick joke, rebranding war as peace. Precisely. So now we've got a situation where uh, many people in the Congress know that the president is in clear violation of the Constitution. So we have an avenue prescribed by the founding fathers for removing a president from office if they've committed high crimes and misdemeanors. And there's no doubt that President Obama crossed that threshold. We also have the option of Section 4 of the 25th Amendment which was enacted in the aftermath of the Kennedy assassination, which laid out precisely how a president may be removed from office with a checks and balances system if he's considered both physically and or mentally unfit to continue to serve. The president's crossed that threshold also. And again, these are issues that are not going to be fought out strictly inside the beltway because there's a great paucity of members of Congress with the moral guts to act to defend the Constitution. We have a group of 10 members of the House uh, led by people like Dennis Kucinich, Walter Jones, John Conyers and other who filed a federal suit against President Obama uh, for failing to live up to his constitutional obligations. And so the federal court now has this matter before them, and this is what caused the White House to completely freak out and scramble to cover for Obama's flagrant violation of the Constitution. Well, even Nadler, and, and, and of course Ron Paul, but even Nadler, the minion of Obama, right. uh, came out and said, if this stands, the presidency is now a king. I mean, he used the term emperor, and, and, and folks don't understand, this is one of the most pure forms of tyranny. If you go back to crossing the Rubicon, with Caesar uh, right. in whatever it was, 45, 46, I forget, uh, uh, before Christ. In fact, we guys pull up Caesar's crossing on the Rubicon for me. He thinks I, I forget the exact year. But the point is, is that uh, this is so out in the open and so ridiculous. And his lie that it would last days, not weeks. And now the special forces are there. They're preparing the ground troops. The Russians have confirmed uh, what the Israelis have confirmed, that what we first reported a month ago, that it's on, cold-bloodedly, always knowing that if they couldn't get rid of Gaddafi, they'd go to ground force, and calling it humanitarian. Now, the, the, the corporatist empire, a very dangerous new strategy, and I'd like you to talk to this, now all they have to do is foment some rebels in the Middle East, North Africa, it's Al-Qaeda as usual, same folks they use against the Russians and the Serbs, have al-Qaeda blow up some police stations, shoot some people, government fights back against it, and then there's a full-on invasion, and you don't even call it a war, and our media now tells us we must support al-Qaeda. Well, look, let's, let's be very clear. The, the Constitution, the War Powers Act, the debate that went on around the passage of the Constitution was very clear. Only the Congress has the authority to declare war. And if you go back to the early history of our republic and when, we're, when we were battling the Barbary pirates, um, Justice John Marshall of the Supreme Court was very clear that Congress lays down very precisely what the president as commander in chief can and cannot do. And the minute that the president crosses the line and goes beyond that, uh, he slapped down in order to cease and desist. Now, under even just the War Powers Resolution itself, it specifies not only American troop involvement, but if an American commander is involved in a military operation, then that constitutes a requirement of the president to get congressional approval. Who is the commander-in-chief of NATO? It's Admiral Stavridis, who's an American naval four-star. Um, the AfricaCom came out with a report last week that basically proved that the president was in contempt of Congress when he filed a 32-page memo arguing why he didn't have to come to Congress. For the first the time, they've ignored...
for the first time, Jeff, as you know, three weeks That's ago, right. they ignored the Pentagon's own lawyers that said you got to go to Congress.